Hi everyone, my name is Federico Tartarini and in this video I'm going to show you how you can translate your Docosaurus website in multiple languages. Let me show you an example. Here on my screen you can see my website. It's a very simple website that I created with Docosaurus. Here we have the website in English, but if I click here on Italiano, you can see actually that the website translates automatically and now the website is in Italian. I will also show you how to deploy this website online for free using Netlify. As you can see here, I've deployed this website on Netlify at this domain. Of course, you can change the domain and you can uh, use a custom domain if you want to. So let me show you step by step in this tutorial how to do that. Of course, if you want to jump between sections, you can always look down in the video timeline and you can skip a part of the video if you know already how to do that and you can skip to the next section. Before we start, I just would like to ask you if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel if you find this type of videos useful because it really helps me understanding that you like this type of content and if you have any question or comments, please just leave it down below under the video. So let me show you how to get started. So first, we just need to go in our computer here. I'm going to create this project here on the desktop. You can create it wherever you want. Of course, it doesn't matter where you create it. So I'm just going to bring up here. I'm just inside my desktop here. So I've just a folder created GitHub projects. And here in Windows, I can just do CMD in order to copy to open the command line and the command line automatically will be open in the desktop path inside my GitHub projects. Docosaurus has two requirements, Node.js and Yarn. You can check if you have Node.js and Yarn installed on your computer using this command. You can check type Node-V and as you can see here, I receive a message saying V12, so I have Node installed on my computer. And the same can be done with yarn, yarn-v, and again you will see that here I've installed yarn on my computer. If you haven't yarn or node installed on your computer, just please install it on your computer. It's going to be very simple. Just type yarn install and you will find a link online on how to get install yarn and node. So the first thing that we will need to do now that we are in the right directory, we will have to use this command to initialize a basic Docosaurus website. So the only thing that you might want to change in this command is the name of the website that you are going to create. So as you can see here, the command is npx at docosaurus power slash init latest, because we want to init the latest version of Docosaurus. Init, I'm going to call it YouTube translation. And then I'm going to use the classic template. I press enter and automatically a new project is going to be created here on my computer. As you can see here, it has been created here, is been initialized. So it's going to take like um, less than a minute usually to get uh, initialized. I will just fast forward this um, part here and I will uh, just um, explain what we need to do next uh, once this website has been initialized on my computer. Okay, as you can see here, my new Docosaurus project has been initialized on my computer and these are a couple of commands that we can use to start our Docosaurus website. But before running this command here into the terminal, I usually like to close the terminal because we don't need it any longer and I'm going to open WebStorm. I'm going to open WebStorm, which I've opened it here. I'm going to open the project we just created, so just file, open, we're going to open YouTube translation, which is just the project that we have created in a new window. Okay. So here the project has been created. And of course, inside here, we have the same directories as we have in our um, directory here on the computer. So as you can see here, we have YouTube translation inside we have blog, docs, node modules, source, and so forth. So we have the same folders here, so we can co we can close uh, now this uh, uh, Windows tab. We can just move this tab here on the side and 
we can just uh, uh, see what we need to change. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to increase the font. So I'm going to increase the font, so it's going to be probably a little bit easier for you to read what I'm doing. So I'm just increase the font in both appearance, editor tab, font here. Okay, perfect. Now I've increased the font. So the first thing that we will, the first file that we're going to need to change is this Docusaurus config file. Okay, you can collapse all this tab. Well, here I can just use a shortcut, but basically you can just collapse all these tabs here. And we just have to add a little bit of code. The little bit of code that we're going to add, I'm going to add it down in the description. So don't worry too much about the code, just follow along with me and then you can copy the code later on. And I will also add a link to the Docusarus official documentation where all the instructions are listed over there. So in my example, I'm going to translate the website in Italian. In the Docusarus official documentation, they are translating the website in French, but in my case, I'm going to translate it in Italian because that's the only other language that I know. So, of course, you can add more than two languages. In this example, we're going to be limited to one language, so English and Italian, but you can, of course, add another language. So we are going to need to change here, FR into IT, and then we are going to change to IT, and the label, we are going to change it to Italiano, okay? Because that's the other language that we want to add. It is very important that you add all this code here inside exports at the end. It doesn't have to be at the end, it can be anywhere, but it's important that you add it here. So basically, it should not be nested inside any other array or object. So now that we have added this Docosaurus configuration, we also need to do another thing. We need to go into team config, open this one here. We have to go into the nav bar here. We have items. We have to go inside here and we have to add an additional item. The additional item that we need to add is the um, drop down, um, the, the drop down where we can select the language. So here, as you can see, we have docs, blog, GitHub, and we need to add another one. So we need to add another one. So we open a curly braces and then we, we write type. We type locale drop down, comma, position, and then we're going to say left, okay? So now that we have added this, we can actually start our website. How do we start our website? We can open our we can open our terminal here. So let me just close this. So we can open our terminal. Of course, it's very important that we are inside the project directory. So as you can see here, because I've op because I've opened the project with the WebStorm, I am already inside the right directory, which is called YouTube translation. We just have to run this command, which is yarn run start dash 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 no space local and then it again i'm going to put this command down in the description below so don't worry too much so automatically docusaurus is starting our development server locally so we're running the website on local host at port 3000 and we can open it actually on our computer so let me just bring it up in our browser so this is my site okay so let's have a look this is how the website looks like at the moment by default the only thing that we have added is these languages and then we have english and italiano so now we will have to partially manually partially automatically translate our website Docusaurus already offers some translation by default if we want to use them for some languages Unfortunately, Italian is not uh, translated by default. What do I mean by default? Like, for instance, if you go here inside our docs, uh, here next, uh, in some languages, such as French, uh, this has already been translated by the community. No one has done it yet for Italian. So we'll have to do that manually, unfortunately. 
but I'm actually planning to uh, contribute to the Docusaurus uh, project and actually try to translate those kind of things in Italian. So by the time you watch this website, maybe that file is going to be already available. But actually it's better that that file is not already available because I want to show you step by step and maybe your language is not going to be available anyway. So I want to show you all the things that you need to do. So the step that we need to do right now is to go to the main page because that's the first page that we want to change. And we are going to change a little bit what is the content inside here. And we are going to wrap it with the translate API. So how do we do that? We need to go in source, pages, and then we're going to open this file, index. If you don't know much about how Docusaurus project is organized and all this file structure, I would actually recommend you to watch my previous tutorial on how to get started with Docusaurus. I think you're going to find that video very useful because it's going to explain you how the Docusaurus website is organized, where all the files are located, and how to get started. So you will see here at the top a pop-up icon with a link to that video. Just have a look at that video after this one if you want to know and better understand how to use Docusaurus. But let's try to modify now this index.js. As you can see, this index.js contains the text for the features. So let me just collapse all these. So we can go here, features, and we have all this text. So this is auto reload. So if I'm going to change this text here, that is easy to use. And we're going to type very easy to use. Control save. This is going to be updated automatically. But as you can see, we are having a problem because we are on the Italian website, but everything is in English. Okay? So we'll have to do a couple of things and in order to change that and start the translation process. The first thing that we will need to do actually is we need to get rid of this um, array called features and of this component, this React component. Unfortunately, in when you're using translation, you can no longer use uh, React components because as you can see here, and again, please have a look at my other video if you want to find out more about uh, all these things. You can see that inside here, inside the home page, which we are exporting the home page here, we have a loop in which we are looping through the features and we're checking what is the length of the feature. And then we are entering a section using a React component, which is this feature here. Unfortunately, if you want to use the translation API offered by Docusaurus, we will have to have static text and strings rather than having a React component in which we pass uh, props or child, okay? So unfortunately, we will have to change that. Let's start doing that. So first, uh, we want to get rid of this part here, which we are mapping through the features, okay? So I'm going to cancel that, save it, and as you can see here, all this is gone, but uh, I'm just going to replace it with one of those features. So instead of doing that programmatically, we have just to do that manually, okay? So how do we do that? We just have to copy this code here. And this is a, just an example. This I just want to show you how to do it. Of course, you don't have to follow my suggestion here. You can actually, um, you can actually change this based on your need and change also the layout of the, of the, of the website. Actually, let's cancel everything that is inside main here. And I'm just going to copy and paste this code here that I've just wrote before. Don't worry too much about this code. I just want to show you um, what, what needs to be done. And then don't worry about copying the exact code. But again, I'm going to share this code. So I've done a bit of changes here. So we will have just to... Uh, compile the website again. So if you want to stop it at any time, you can go back to the terminal, Control C, yes to stop it, and then we use the arrow up and we start it again. Same command as before, and we're going to restart the server because we have significantly changed the code. So Docusaurus was having a couple of issues. So let's just open the website again. 
So the reason why it's throwing an error, because you can see here there is an error, is because I haven't imported here translate. So let me just uh, import that. So here I forgot to do that. So here in the import, uh, at the beginning of the page, we also need to import translate. And we just need to do control save. And as you can see here, the website now has been loaded properly. And instead of having three features as we had before, we just have one. Let me just very quickly show you this feature. So we have a div inside here, which we have a simple style and class name just for a bit for styling. Then we have another div nested inside, which is just needed for to center all the text. We have an image tag, which we are importing the image, an h3 tag here, which is just this easy to use. And then we have a paragraph here where we have the text here. Notice that all my text here is always wrapped inside this translate. So as you can see here, we have translate wrapping this text here. But then also we have translate here. So let me actually just put it in a new line. OK, so here we are. So we have also translate wrapping this text, which is easy to use. Is it extremely important that you wrap all the strings that we want to translate from one language to the other language with this translate command okay, that we just imported before? Another thing that we want to change is the title of our website. So again, here, inside this h1 tag that we have here, we're going to wrap this with translate. So let me just type translate and then close this tag. And here we're going to call it my site. So let me just uh, reload it. As you can see, is my site. Unfortunately, we cannot you longer pass these variables here as children inside this component because that unfortunately is not going to work. So let's also add the tagline. So again, we translate. So we just have to add this tag, translate. And then inside here, we are going to write uh, the tagline of my. I just save it like this, just I want to show you the auto reload. Now that you have seen that as I'm typing here, it's changing up here as well. We're going to change this one to the tagline of my site. OK, so now we are almost done. So we have all our strings that we want to translate wrapped into this translate. So now that we have done that, the other thing that we need to do is to run this command here. So let me just copy this command. Let me open a new terminal. And I'm just going to explain what we need to do. So we need to do yarn run write dash translations with plural dash 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 local and then space it okay so this is going to translate our website and then it's done so what has been happening and what has happened so if you go back into the project here you can see that there is now this new folder I9, I189, so this is the folder, and we have some files inside here, okay? So let me show you this file here. Then we have the theme classic, so we have the footer and the nav bar. So here we are going to translate our website. We're going to translate the nav bar and the footer. So we're going to basically translate all these here and all these here, because this is nav bar and this is going to be the footer. And then finally, we have code.json, where here we're going to translate our website. So we have my site here. Let me just change this string here to il mio sito, and then press Control Save, and this is going to be automatically updated here. So now we just have to go step by step and translate all our website. Unfortunately, that has to be done manually. But then we are going to have all our website translated into languages. If the auto reload here doesn't work, 
we just have to go to the previous terminal tab that we had we had open we just have to do control c we want to terminate this job and then we want to run again yarn run start dash 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 local it okay so if you run that again we're going to start a local server a development server again on our computer and that is going to ensure that everything is working so let me show you a couple of more examples so here we can change the tagline of my site so we can say the tagline del mio sito easy to use and we can do this facile da usare and then we are going to change the cusaurus so we are going to change this string here so let me just do soft wrap here so we're going to change this uh, and we're going to say uh, docusaurus uh, mm, fantastic okay so I'm, I'm not going to be like translated perfectly at the moment because i don't want to waste too much time and i don't want to waste too much of your time but this is basically the string in english that we are referring to and this is the string in Italian that we want to change. The same goes with the nav bar. So for instance, title. So here, we can go inside here. So this is the title, my site. So instead of calling my site, we can call it il mio sito. And then we have docs here. We want to change it to documenti. And again, you can see documenti, and then we have languages, Italiano and Inglese, and everything is fine. Then we can do the same thing with the footer. Of course, uh, I'm, again, I'm not going to translate everything, but just to show you, documenti, control save, and this is going to change to documenti. So we can go step by step, translate all our website. It's going to take a little bit of time. And again, it depends on which language you're actually using, because uh, in some languages is easier because some of these uh, actually text has already been translated for instance in French but not in Italian so unfortunately we'll have to do that manually so now that we have translated all our website and of course I mean we have translated only some of the website we need to do a couple of other things first thing that I want to show you is also how to translate this button because we haven't wrapped it with translate. So let's go back to index and then uh, we can look for uh, get started here. Get started. So again, we just have to wrap this get started with uh, a tag translate, translate. Yes, and we close the tag. And of course, this get started has to go inside here. So we can just save it, we can just uh, yeah, reformat the file if we want to, but we have to go again here in local and we have to run the same command to uh, just now update this file here because this code JSON doesn't have this get started button. So how do we do that? We go back into the terminal, we click with the arrow up and we do yarn run write translation dash dash local IT. So we run that again. We check that there are no error messages here at the bottom. And now this code JSON file should be updated. Okay. And we should be able to find this get started uh, button. So get started. Okay. Now in this case is at the end. So we can change that. Inizia uh, a usare il nostro sito. Yes, so now we have also translated this button here. So we have translated all of the thing in the main page here. What we haven't translated are the markdown files. Of course, we can translate the markdown files very simply and uh, uh, of course uh, um, Docusaurus uh, provide a simple way to do that as well. So how do we do that? We just have to use another command. So we can just go here. We can open a new tab in our terminal. And this command is going to be a little bit more complex, but I will, again, I will put the link in the description to the code that we're going to use. So we're going to create a new directory 
mk with the command mk dir, and then we're going to see say p, and then we're going to say the location of this directory. So let me just copy that, and I just need to change one thing. So my translation is for the Italian website, so I just need to change France to it. So now we have created a new directory, and where it's inside here. So now we just need to do another command. So this command is slightly different. So it's copy uh, R recursively. So all the things, uh, all the things that are inside the doc folder. So we are copying all the things, all these files here that are inside the docs folder. We are copying it into the folder that we just created and to change from France to IT. So now inside current, as you can see before, this folder was empty. Now we have all our uh, markdown file. So again, I'm not going to change them all. So if you go in documents, the first document that we get prompted is getting started. So let's go and translate getting started. So the document is here under current getting started. Let me clear a little bit the window here so we can just show the markdown file. Let me collapse this project tab here. Now, basically, I just have to, again, translate uh, word by word. So getting started, inizia con uh, Docusaurus. And then here, um, we just have to translate this. So genera un sito con Docusaurus and so forth. So I can just press save and this is uh, this is going to translate all our page for us. Of course, this comes very handy because why is very handy? Because we have our docs here where we have all the content in English and then we have all our translated documents here inside these subfolders. So right now we just have the Italian website, but if you want to add another language or if you want to replace Italian with another language, you can just call this folder as you want. So here, we basically just have to translate uh, all this website. Uh, um, so let me just translate the last line, but I think you have understood what you need to do. And we just have to go, unfortunately, line by line and translate your website. So let's write, say, non lie ancora fatto, crea un nuovo progetto con il template classico. Okay, so now we have translated also this line and here we can see all the changes which are reflected. The same thing and I will not show you I will I will just write the comment the I will just write the comment here in the terminal and I will put uh, this uh, um, code down in the description. I'm not going to spend time to translate also the blogs because it's going to take too much time and I think you have understood. So basically, we're going to do the same thing for the blogs. So here in the terminal, we're going to create another directory. Again, we need to change from French to Italian. Here we need to go Docusaurus plugin content blog. So as you can see here, we have all the content docs but now we're going to create content blog. So now if I reload from disk, now we have content blog, and then we are going to move all the markdown file from the blog directory into this directory that we just created. Okay, so we run this command here, and again, now if I re reload from disk, inside here we have all the blogs. And of course, I can just translate this into uh, hola. Okay, so instead of hola, we can say so. Yeah, so this has translate the blog, and you can translate all the blogs if you want. And if you want, you can also translate pages if you're going to add pages, separate pages to your Docusaurus website. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but I will just put the link down in the description to the code on how to do that and I will redirect you to the official Docosaurus documentation. So now that we have done everything, the last step that we need to do is to deploy our website. I think the best way to deploy this website 
is uh, by using uh, um, Netlify. So I have already a Netlify account, so I just have to, or Netlify, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but basically we can just get started for free and we can have multiple projects. So as you can see here, I've already some projects. So we're going to create a new, um, we're just going to deploy a new website. How to do that is super simple. It's honestly super simple and that's why I recommend to use um, Netlify. We just have to do yarn, build so as you can see here at the moment there is no build folder so if we do yarn build it's going to build our website for us it's going to take just uh, less than a minute to do that in the meantime actually let me just open this one in explorer so here we have our file open in explorer Okay, the build folder has been generated, so let me just uh, allow this process to finish. Okay, now it's done. So super simple. We just get the build and we drop it here. We just drop it here. It's going to take uh, a few seconds for uh, Netlify to de deploy this website and it's going to deploy it uh, here on this URL. So it's deploying our website, actually it's already done. So we go preview deploy here. So now we have our website both in English and in Italian. Now we have done everything from start to finish. I really hope you like this video. And if you did, please consider liking it here on YouTube with a thumb up. If you have any question, please write a comment down in the video description below. And please consider subscribing to my channel if you find this type of video useful. If you want to learn more about Docusaurus, please look at my playlist that I have on uh, YouTube, where I have other interesting video, for instance, how to add a search bar to Docusaurus and how to deploy from start to end a full Docusaurus website. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.